They accuse us of being emotional about this. I want to ask, what's wrong with a little emotion? I am here before you today, gentlemen, as an emotional woman. I am not only here to tell you why I, an emotional woman, but a woman familiar with Alaska, thinks these areas should in all their innocence and beauty be cherished. Now, I don't know whether the human race is going to survive very much longer. I sometimes wonder whether we deserve to. Who knows what is ahead in the long march of evolution? But saving the last remnants of wild, untouched country seems to me to be the one wise, altruistic, beneficial, and practical action this nation can take for its sanity. When all the non-renewable resources have been dug up, hauled away, piped away, to satisfy the needs of a certain span of users, Alaska can still have a renewable, self-perpetuating resource of inestimable value. Value economical, value spiritual, value for the health of the people. We cannot foretell the future, but we can give a nod toward it by putting this last treasure of wild country into an interest-bearing savings account. The interest will be from the continual revenue from travel, from allowing the other owners of these lands to come and see them and travel in them and leave them unspoiled. In the long view, all Alaska needs to do is be Alaska. The oil will be found and it will go. Whatever minerals are left will go too. Timber will be depleted. What then is left for the future besides the fisheries? We plead that enough Alaska will be left to furnish a healthy economy and a happy life for her people and her visitors. Surely the great United States of America is not so poor we cannot afford these places. Not so rich that we can do without them. All I have said here could be called emotional, sentimental, impractical, too idealistic. I am here to plead an impractical theory. For I firmly believe there are cases where idealism is in the long run the most practical course. And I believe this is true of Alaska now.